Welcome to MSL Talk with Tom Caravella, a podcast specifically designed for MSLs and all things field medical. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. My guest today is Sarah Snyder. Um, MSL turned MSL recruiter on my team. So Sarah works at the Carolyn Group now, and we welcome her. Today is her, actually her first day. And so we decided to celebrate by doing a podcast on mom life. So it's five ways that moms, MSL moms can survive and thrive in the role. It's an awesome conversation. Sarah's amazing. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to follow us on um, YouTube and subscribe to us on YouTube. Check us out on Instagram and uh, MSL Talk Live, which is the first Tuesday of every month at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. And that's on the Clubhouse app. Hey, Sarah, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Tom. This is exciting. So let me start by welcoming Sarah in more ways than one. So I'm welcoming her back to the podcast for the third time. This is actually the third time Sarah's been here. Um, but today is her first official day working at the Carolyn Group. So Sarah's on my team now. She is an M- She went from MSL to MSL recruiter, and we are absolutely thrilled to have her on our team. Thank you so much for joining us, Sarah. So welcome. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm just thankful for the opportunity and for this podcast. I mean, think about it. I think I reached out to you with an idea for the podcast, and then we got to know each other, and then now I have this opportunity to work. Like, it just shows the power of networking. It's amazing. It's a great networking story, and that's exactly how it happened. We met each other through this podcast and got to know each other, and we collaborated a bunch of times on different things from the podcast to MSL Talk Live. Um, yep. And and here we are, and I'm thrilled, and I'm excited, and I think this is going to be a tremendous journey, and I really look forward to doing this with you. So, yep. um, and I, I want to just, before we go into any further introductions and history as to how we came up with this topic, I want to give a quick shout out to the folks that have, um, there's a lot of people that are doing job announcements on LinkedIn, whether they're aspiring MSLs, just getting their first MSL position or MSLs that are getting their dream job and even MSL managers. And I just want to tell you how appreciative I am for the people that tag me and the podcast in those announcements. It really makes my day. It's one of the main reasons I do this podcast Um, And I want to thank you. And I want to thank you, not just from me. I want to thank you on behalf of my network, because when you tag me in those announcements, it goes out to my entire network. And the people that I talk to that are struggling, people that are trying to find a job, that are having trouble finding a job, when they see that, it gives them hope. It's It's a motivator. And I think it's just a great message to those folks. Just keep going, keep at it, and it'll happen for you. So thank you, guys. Um, All right, Sarah, let's rock and roll. You came up with a really, really good idea, which is five ways to survive and thrive at MSL and mom life. So let's start at the beginning. What's what's number one? What's your what's your like starting advice for the MSL mom? Yeah. Yeah, So this is a topic that's like near and dear to my heart. So I have three kids uh, and some of the people that know me well know that they're all three internationally adopted. And so I actually, my first two, we came home with them together and they were toddlers. And all of a sudden I was like an MSL and a mom and my life changed overnight. So not everybody has that drastic (laughs) change, Mm -hmm. but uh, you know, people that bring home a new baby, they have their maternity leave and then they go back. And then all of a sudden you have to go to your national meeting or you have to go to, uh, you know, start going to see KOLs in your territory again. And when I'm describing this, I'm saying that you have to do it, right? And I think I've been on this podcast before to talk about mindset, but the number one thing that I can tell you that was a mistake I made was not having the right mindset. And so when I say that, like, I I should go back and say everything I just said and say, I get to, 
So that's like the number one thing. If you just change one thing about the way that you think about going back to traveling, uh, you, you know, going to your KOL visits, doing anything that you have to do as a mom and you say, I get to, it just changes everything. So I think that just that one little thing will make a big difference. Uh, but I actually did write out some things when I was thinking about this, just the mindset piece that I get to versus I have to, it's just one. I think you, you have to realize that you're not a stay at home mom. And it's easier now with COVID because everybody's working from home. So people get it. But before that, you know, you, you, you're there. <laughs> so your kids don't realize like, you're not a stay at home mom. You're not like Dina across the street who's, you know, going and can go have lunch and go do all these different things. It, it's, you're not that. So don't try to do it because it's just going to make you miserable. Uh, you, you know, people say this too. It's easier said than done, but like, don't try to be a super mom. Like, you can't do all the things. So, like, you have to be really strategic. And we can talk about that with some specific examples. You know, uh, mom guilt is real. And so sometimes I think you just have to embrace that and realize that it's going to be present. And then you try to minimize it, but don't try to like squelch it because it's just part of it. Uh, I think celebrating, you know, the little things, whether it's a good KOL visit, whether it's, uh, you know, a good presentation that you gave, something that happened with your kids, like celebrating the little things will really pay off. Uh, and then just two more things about mindset. I, you and I both listen to a lot of podcasts, read a lot of books, but personal development, like don't stop it just because you're a mom and you're all of a sudden doing all these things for your kids. Like the most important thing is to just work on yourself and then that will spread throughout your entire family. And then the last one, you know, uh, I think it, I've mentioned this I, on this podcast, I think the book, everything is figure audible. I, if you're a mom, like you should read it and have the audio book on with your kids. She does have a little bit of profanity in there, just FYI, but you know, you can figure things out. And so just take it day by day. And, you know, sometimes it can be really hard. I remember that first trip and sitting in their hotel room thinking like, how am I supposed to do this? You know, and I always laugh with my female colleagues that were MSLs and moms because we're like, our husbands, if they go on a business trip and forgive me for the, the men out there that are doing a fabulous job, but like generally they just pack their bags and they're like, I leave Monday at 10 o'clock and they go or whatever, you know, whereas we're like, who's picking the kids up at six, who's, you know, taking, you know, so-and-so to their ballet class, you know, like we're figuring it all out. Uh, and you see your mind is just going and going and going. So just, you know, realize that you can figure it out and things turn out. Like you think that this thing's the end of the world, but it's really not. So, and my kids are, you know, older teens now and, you know, we'll see, I guess, what did they say? You don't really know how your kids turn out until they're, they're like in their forties, but you know, <laughs> they're, they're surviving. So anyway, the mindset I think is the most important thing. So I'm glad we started that with number one. Well, and I think that you're, I'm, I'm glad we're doing this because I think that there are a lot of women out there. And I, I talked to a lot of folks and just had conversations recently um, with folks that they're overwhelmed. They're totally yeah. overwhelmed. And you use words like, you know, guilt, um, yes. and, and like mindset, like it's true. I know that there's a lot that, um, that affects women probably more than men in, and, and I'm saying that as a, as a dude, um, yeah. because of the very nature of, of, you know, what moms take on. And yeah. I'm glad we're having this conversation and I appreciate where you're starting because I really do think it does start with your mindset. It starts with your attitude, your approach. Yeah. I'm re you know me and I'm really big on that. I'm big on intention. I'm big on being decisive and really being a good planner and being strategic. And that's what all this is about. Um, before we get to number two, um, when you talk about personal development, I know you are an avid reader and mm -hmm. podcaster. And um, so what are some recommendations that you have as far as like books and podcasts, like what, what, what's worked for you and what do you think people should maybe put on their reading list? Yeah, I have a few like specific examples. So I mentioned Everything is Figure Outable. I really like that book. Uh, I like Daring Greatly, Brene Brown. A lot of people listen to her podcast too. Uh, think Like a Monk. I think I mentioned that on a previous podcast. That book is, it's not just about being a monk. It's just all about mindset. And it's really gives a lot of tactical things. So I like that one. Uh, and I think, uh, 
fear is not the boss of you is another one. I think that females in general don't have as much courage sometimes. And especially if you're a new mom and you're just kind of like, feel like you're messing everything up. That one's a great one. Uh, for podcasts, oh, and I'll, I'll mention one more, uh, finish. And that one was really, uh, a lot of times I start books and then I like don't get to the finish. So that one was kind of funny because it talks about how hard it is to finish things. Uh, and so I like that one a lot. Uh, for podcasts, you know, that I listen to in the car or whatever, uh, or world working out, um, I like passion minded mom. That's one specifically for moms. Um, overcoming you is the one that I like, uh, for the love with Jen Hatmaker. Um, a lot of women know her and that one's just kind of a silly one that she kind of makes fun of a lot of things, but when you need a little bit of a of a break. Uh, Marie Forleo is a really short one. If you just have 10 minutes, there's just like, it's kind of amazing how she can tell, it, give advice in like five minutes and you're like, oh, and you can almost apply it to anything, whether it's being an MSO, you know, a KOL, dealing with a difficult KOL or a project. Uh, so those are good. Uh, and then I just wanted to touch on just a couple of things that I do that have helped too. And, and that's like adopting that, like what you see, what you hear and what you do. Uh, and it really matters. And so like when what you see, you know, I, my desk is behind me. And so like, what's above your desk, you know, mine is the word grit. And I have that on like a wall decal, you know, cause that word, it was my word of the year last year. And it just like symbolizes what I think at this part of my life. Uh, and it's, it's important to realize like you've got seasons to your life. And so if you've got young, like infants, you know, you're not going to be able to maybe do some of the things that you can later, like I can with teenagers, you know, but what you see every day is so meaningful. So, you know, I like to have that up there. I like to take a dry erase board and just write like a quote up on the bathroom mirror. So when you go in and you brush your teeth in the morning, you see something right away when you wake up that that sticks with you all day. Um, what you hear, I this I as an early MSL especially, I spent too much time on the phone gossiping with colleagues. So like just if you're doing that, just stop. Like there's always going to be a difficult person on your team, or maybe a K well you don't like, but like if you spend your time talking about that, it it just like it takes over and that's what's going to happen. And it just oozes out of you. So, you know, I, I like the, I think I read it, you know, 30 days, no gossip, like just do it. Like only talk about positive things at work. It's not being like positive poly, but you'd be surprised. Like you just stop noticing like the negative people on your team, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then the third one is like what you do. And again, we'll talk about some of the more tangible things, but I like the you know idea that time is money and we only have, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And, you know, you go to these meetings and everybody talks about how busy they are, but like, are you really getting things done? Or are you just being busy? And so really thinking about your time, doing a time audit, as silly as it sounds, like go through hour by hour and see like what you're actually doing on your day or your week. And you probably can find some time to, to fit in. So, you know, just, um, those are those are my little mindset things as well as the the things that I listen to. They're awesome. All of them are really good, and I'd love to go back and reflect on every one of them. But um, yeah. I want to get to number two. But I really think that this this is such tremendous tremendous advice. I I want to just kind of take a pause real quick for for those of you listening to this. We're going to have this on YouTube as well. This is something where I really think you almost have to take notes because Sarah's mm -hmm. this advice is just really valuable. So check this out on YouTube as well. We're trying to get the episodes up on YouTube as fast as possible. So you'll see that we're starting to get those on almost real time. Um, so Sarah, what's number two? Yeah, and I will preface this by saying like, this has been like a work in progress for me. I'm still working on, like I work on this every day. So it's not like I, you know, pop out of bed, you know, like super positive every day, but I feel like my transition from starting as an MSL and, and then becoming a mom and then, you know, just evolving. And when I really took time to work on my personal development, my whole family benefited and my career. I, that's so that's where I get to that. Uh, but yeah, number two is childcare. So you know, every mom has to figure out childcare and the best, you know, scenario for your family. Um, but I, I, this is a little specific for MSLs because again, we're home, you know, people can, 
now relate to us, I guess, because everybody was working from home with the pandemic. But when people start going back to the offices and you're still at home, it's, it's a different uh, transi transition and you've got to figure out something. Uh, we have done both. We did daycare and we did a nanny. So I think that's the number one decision you have to make for yourself is, you know, is daycare going to work? Because daycare, you know, when you're starting to go back out in the field and you have to have, you know, your kids picked up at 4.30 or 5 whenever the daycare closes, you know, the MSL clock is not usually, you know, 8 to 5. So when we started and had the daycare, like it just didn't work for us. Um, I was doing a lot of dinner programs. I was doing a lot of traveling, a lot of ad boards on the weekend. Uh, so when we switched to a nanny, it was a much better fit. We never did a live-in nanny, but um, finding a nanny can be a process in itself, uh, but I would just recommend, you know, going to something like care.com, asking friends, even using something like Facebook, uh, and then just interviewing a ton of people. And when you do the interviews, like you have to be really honest about what your life is like. Some people don't like the fact that you're going to be home all the time. You know, some nannies take that as kind of like as someone's going to be watching me, you know, so you've got to be honest about what your job looks like, you know, that you're in, that you're home, but you're not going to be able to just like pop out the door. Um, and just again, be really picky. I, I think it's really nice if you can find someone flexible, pay them well so that they, you're paid well, so pay them well. Like, don't try to, this is not an area to skimp on, you know, like to try to save money on, like, just do it. It's only for a few years, you know, when the kids are little. So do that. Um, and then I, I wrote a couple of things down to make sure that I would <laughs> remember, but um, find somebody that's willing to like, do tasks that a nanny necessarily wouldn't. I have a previous colleague that hers would make dinner for them every night, or, you know, will they go to the post office for you? Like somebody that is going to be willing to go drop off, you know, if you need something altered, like that's the kind of person I found. And it was, she was just amazing. And she complimented our family too. So like, you're not trying to find a replication of yourself. You're trying to find someone with a little bit of a different personality, you know, to bring, a, you know, a different character into your house. Um, you know, we even had one that if I traveled on the weekend, she would help us then. So, you know, if you can find someone like that, it's hard to find. I'm like describing this perfect person. And we actually had her for years and years. My kids ended up being in her wedding. Uh, and so that's, you know, that was, a lifesaver for us. Uh, and then we had two that I didn't, they were okay, but like just not so good. So that's where I'm saying, like, just be picky, ask a lot of questions. Uh, and then I wanted to point out like three things that I think helped with our success with the nanny. And that wasn't necessarily always uh, right away, um, but you have to ask for what you want. Like, just don't assume that she's going to know what to do, when to do it, and how you want it done. And I know people say like, don't sweat the small stuff, but you're a mom. And like, seriously, you're going to like want your kids to be well cared for and you're going to be picky. So like, ask for it. Don't, you know, it's kind of like gossiping about the colleague. Like, don't complain about what the nanny didn't do. Like, just be honest, to have a conversation, tell her, you know, I think that's um, a big part, uh, you know, over communicate, um, be specific about what you want her to do. And then uh, this is the most important thing of all, just remember your work is important and you're there, but like, you're not there. I just uh, read last night, what is it? Like, if you get distracted, it takes the average person 23, 23 minutes, I think, to get back on task. So you might think it's not a big deal if your kid, you know, comes in the door and just asks you a quick question, but actually getting back to your, your brain takes that long to just get back on track. So you need to really have a place. I used to have my office in the basement when my kids were little, just because that way I was completely siloed off. So, so those are just some things I think that those helped are with child. Awesome tips. And, you know, I'll tell you, it happens fast. Kids grow yes. all, all of a sudden, the blink of an eye, they're out of the house, they're in college. Um, it's just, I know that this is one of those things that a lot of people have difficulty doing. They have difficulty leaving their kids or they have apprehension about leaving them with somebody else. But yes. it's, if you're going to have a professional career, there, it's, it's, an, it's a necessary thing that has to happen. So these are really good tips. I I hope that everyone out there finds the success that you have found in finding the right childcare um, and making the right decision. But I will say it, they, they, it happens fast. The blink of the eye, the kids are, the kids are out of the house. Um, yeah. So now number three, what's on your list for number three? 
Yeah, number three is just to be organized. And I think that one kind of is obvious, but I had a couple of like specific tips that helped us, you know, with organization, uh, you know, labeling everything, especially if you're going to have a nanny come into the house. Uh, you know, it sounds silly. And some of my male colleagues just used to laugh. I'm going to sound like I'm super picky, but, you know, I even had things in my fridge labeled, <laughs> like where you, because I'd come home and there like wouldn't be any milk and nobody would know where anything was. So like, if you just have things like where things go and then everybody just puts it where it goes and our house is like not super neat, but it's organized. Like everybody knows where things go. And that makes a big difference. You know, you don't want to be running around trying to find the kids gloves. You know, it's just like things like that. So just making sure that everything has a place. And then that way the nanny knows where things go or whoever you have coming in to help you. Uh, we also had like, you know, my parents or my husband's parents would come help with the kids, you know, if I was traveling for, let's say a four day meeting or something. So it's, it's necessary. Like it sounds silly, but like that way everybody can figure out where things are. Um, you know, outsourcing what you're not good at and embracing it, I think is important as far as it, it's organizing in a way, because you're, you're right. Like, I don't like to cook. And so, you know, I, when I was, the kids were littler, I probably tried to like think, oh, I'm going to make these fancy meals. Well, you know what? I don't like to do that. Like I like to eat really clean and simple. And so that's what we do now. And like figuring that out. Some people love, if you love to gourmet cook, by all means, go do it. But like, otherwise just simplify it, figure out what you're good at. I don't like to garden. So, um, you know, we have somebody that does some of that stuff for us, you know, pay, pay someone to do the things that you don't want to do. Um, you know, I, if you don't have a like, pay someone to clean your house, like you should not be cleaning your house, you know, like, especially if you have young kids at home, like just outsource whatever you can and you'll be so much happier and better professional. I think, um, I had a couple other silly ones. Uh, I, my kids were little, especially there's always a time, right. Whether it's a snow day or your nanny sick or whatever, where you're going to have something happen. And then all of a sudden here you are with your kids. So we had busy boxes. And so they were like, you know, there's like plastic things you can get at target. And I put office supplies in them, like tape, you know, like a little stapler. This is like when they're a toddler age and it was all like work stuff, but they could only have that box like if mom had a super urgent meeting where they could not, you know, bother and that, that was like their work. <laughs> and so if we had like a time where let's the nanny was late or something and I had an important meeting, then they got to have those boxes and they would just work away <laughs> and pretend this is before they could even write, you know. So having that kind of system like set up so that you're not frantic and you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, the nanny's two hours late or whatever, like car trouble, like something's going to happen. So sure. just prep in advance. Um, and then the other thing I had written out is, uh, always have snacks. Like there's nothing worse than being hangry. Like if you're a kid, you know, or an adult, so just, um, keep them in your car, you know, keep them in your office. You don't have to go get something, you know, and then everybody sees you and they're like, Oh, mom, 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 you know, like just have systems in place. So I think those are the, the main things. I love that really for anyone. I think that it's yeah. almost paramount to be yeah. organized in your life yes. in order to be effective in what yeah. you're doing. So the, I think those are really great practical tips for moms, but really for anybody. Like, I hope there's some dudes listening to this because yeah. I'm learning a lot and I'm like the busy box is genius. I wish yeah. I knew that back in the yeah. day. Um, yeah. You know, we, uh, we're, we're our family We're my wife and I were just, we're totally, uh, we abused the whole like, Back when my kids were little, we had like, it was, I don't even know if it was DVD. I think it was like VHS tapes, but we yeah. would just plop them in front of the TV. We'd put a movie in, we'd put a tape on, we'd put a DVD on, whatever it was. And that would occupy them. So I, I like your idea better because at least there's something productive coming out of that. Maybe they're, they're learning some kind of skill. Um, yeah. Anyway, so let's go to number four. Yeah. So actually that just says what you were just talking about. Cause it's like screen time can be golden. Like screen time can be a good thing. It can be a babysitter. It is, you know, I don't have any problem with that. I've used screen time as a babysitter so many times. I can't even tell you, but you know, a couple of things that jumped out at me, like that minimize the guilt, I guess, of doing that. Um, you know, you can actually on Netflix, you know, where you have Sarah's account, you know, like everybody has their little account. And then mm -hmm. I just have one that I don't do this anymore. My kids are teens, but um, that was like kids TV. And then I had certain educational TV like things on there. So it's a separate Netflix account, mm -hmm. you know, not an account, but um, 
person, yes, you know, yeah. and then just have like education. Yeah. So that way they could watch anything on that, you know, for that time. And that way you're not kind of fiddling around trying to figure out if that's the show that you want them to watch or not. So that's an easy thing. Mm -hmm. uh, educational apps, um, the Epic reading app, if you have an elementary or even like a preschool kid, the Epic app is, I think it's $7.99 a month. And uh, I mean, you can use your library. It's a, you know, you can definitely do that too. But like the Epic app will read to your kids. It's got kind of like the more up-to-date book, books that your kids are actually going to read. It's got little educational videos. So I love that one. Um, I've already been on this podcast and, you know, obviously I like podcasts, but like educational podcasts for your kids are amazing. A um, couple of my favorites are Kid News, uh, Who Smarted, like I learned from that one with my uh, elementary age daughter, and then Tumble Science. So those are cool. And then the other really helpful tool is outschool.com. Uh, and that's a site where you can, your kids can literally take an online, online class about almost anything. Um, even your high schoolers, they have a lot of like life skill classes. And uh, so that's, that's cool. It's not that, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it for, I, I think. So those are like the screen time, uh, I guess, guilt-free things. But I like those. Everything that you said, there was, you know, there's something positive and educational about it. I, I was always afraid to plop my kids in front of like video games. Yeah. It was one thing if there was, if they were watching some kind of video or a movie, but I was worried that these kids were going to wind up being addicted to, to video games. So that was like one of the things that I tried to kind of steer them away from of course they had their game boys and then they wound up getting into it to an extent but i like all those ideas i think that they're great um so what about number five well this is the most important i guess other than the mindset because it's travel and so people are going to be starting to go back out in the field and i've you know, we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago on Clubhouse with the medical affairs group about women and just professional development. And, and then people started asking, sending me messages like, well, how did you manage being a mom and traveling? And I'm like, yeah, it's it that in itself could be a whole, uh, I guess, episode. But some of the things that jumped out at me, um, leaving home is a challenge, especially when the kids are little, but like the way that you leave means everything. Like I used to get really grumpy for like a couple of days before like a four day trip, you know? And it's like, what did that do? Like it spread to everybody. And then everybody thought like, oh, mom has to go away. Like this is, uh, you know, whereas if when I realized, like if I looked at it as like, I get to go, like I, here's where I'm going, show you on the map let's talk about it. Let's, I'm going to send you pictures. Like I get to go, this is what I'm doing when I'm there. You know, this is what I'm going to learn about or what I'm going to teach other people about and like spreading that and making it something that I was looking forward to. And that they should realize like, it's cool that mom gets to travel, you know, not just that like, Oh, mom's gone and everything's going to be chaotic and a mess, you know? So I think that like when the way that you leave is going to really affect them. So uh, that is, that's big. Uh, and the other piece, I guess, is work travel is not a vacation. I've, I was, I remember the first team I was on and, you know, we had a lot of fun, which is great. Uh, luckily I had like some running partners that would get me up in the morning. Uh, so that was good, but like you can, you can start as an MSL and you can actually quickly put on a ton of weight. Cause you're like, they're bringing you food all the time, having these fancy dinners, you're sitting at airports, you know, like, so you have to have like this realization, like work travel is not a vacation and you need to try to keep some of your same schedule as much as possible. I'm not saying don't go out and have a good time because I like to drink wine and, you know, to go out with people and stuff. But like, you do have to try to make sure you're drinking water. Don't drink too much alcohol. Like, just don't do it. It's not good professionally and it's not good physically. Uh, and find an accountability partner to get up and go to the gym like that. Just do it. Uh, if you don't take anything else away from this, like when you're traveling, make that a priority. Uh, and I think that will help a lot, I guess, with just the travel uh, component. Uh, some other things we did, I, my kids were literally, I'd always leave them little notes, like in different places. This would be for like a four day trip, not for like a, a two, you know, <laughs> so that kind of thing helps. Um, and then with the older kids for something like that, if I was going to be gone multiple days, we'd have a little text chain where we would do like a gratitude thing and I would make them, <laughs> you know, send one thing that you were grateful from today. And then that way you're still connecting with them when you're away. So, you know, it's, um, it's travel can be a, a challenge. Um, some of the other things that 
people threw out there when we did that clubhouse is almost all of us said we had a bag already packed. Like you have all your toiletries, you all have all your makeup, like just buy two. And, you know, it's going to be so much easier. And that way, when it's ready to go, you just go, you know, um, keep, keep extra chargers in your car, keep it in, you know, you shouldn't have to like pack those kind of things. That's just like, don't waste your time with that. Um, so yeah, I think those are some of the things about travel. I think the biggest thing is, uh, you know, just appreciate it. Like I've gotten to go to so many different countries and I've been to almost every state and seen so many things that I've never would have gotten to do if I wasn't an MSL. And I have friends all over the country, you know, and especially running buddies, like I can't tell you how many people, you know, I keep in touch with just because we used to go for a run early in the morning. And that's a great way to make connections, whether it's a walk or meeting someone at the gym or, you know, it's a, it's a great, it's hard to be an MSL and be home and not like be able to connect in an office with people. So that was always a way that helps me, you know, get to know other people. Yeah. It's, and it's not something that people should dread. I think a lot of times oh. I'm talking to people now and they're like, yeah, pretty soon we're going to get back out there. Or I'll talk to somebody that that is, you know, a newer MSL that hasn't had that experience yet. And and they're worried and and rightfully so. It could be overwhelming, but it's it's to your point. I mean, it's one of the greatest parts about being an MSL is you really get the opportunity to see all these places and meet different people and um, you just have to manage it right. And you, these tips were really awesome, practical tips. If you're looking for, um, we did another podcast on um, field travel, survival skills with Maria Urso, um, probably about a year ago. So if you're looking for more tips, like, you know, travel tips and survival tips on the road, Maria was great. And she's just like you, Sarah, she's, you know, she's athletic and you know, she talked about how you have to be careful, you know, not drinking too much and stay hydrated and, um, you know, all that stuff. So, I mean, it's obviously the successful field MSLs all know that there are these little secrets and nuances. So hopefully this got, this will help all you guys. Um, what about, I know that we went through the, the top five, but there was some bonus tips that you had, we had yeah. talked about. Do you want to talk about some of those too? Yeah, sure. Just to wrap up, like just some of the little things I was thinking helps me like survive, I guess, uh, over the years, you know, always buy birthday party gifts in advance. Seems silly, but like just do like have some gift cards in, on hand, whether it's for birthday parties or for uh, people that have done something nice for you. And now it's nice because you can send the e-cards too, like if you want to send somebody a thank you. But, you know, the birthday party gifts in advance, um, the long term travel, like I never, I didn't get my kids like gifts for anything over four days, but if I was gone four nights or more, then they knew they got something. So, you know, that's um, just something I did. So instead of buying it at the airport though, like I always just had a bin downstairs where I'd hide little things and then I'd go grab something from there. Um, uh, FaceTiming at the same time each day when you're gone, that seems easier said than done because sometimes you just don't know what your schedule is going to be. But like just that way, the kids know some kind of a routine, especially when they're little. Um, using a day of the week organizer, I have uh, I have a lot of MSL mom friends that we would literally we'd get the pictures of our kids from the dad and see what they were. And it was like, do like that. <laughs> you, you never know. Like, there's, there's some funny stories, but so anyway, if you use one of those day of the week organizers, you can just get on Amazon and then you can just put it in there and then they don't have to worry about that. Um, you can record a reading uh, of yourself, like reading a story. I think that's a nice one to do. Um, and then, you know, the buy the food that you want them to eat. Like a lot of us MSL moms, like we like to complain about like, what the dads did or whatever, but like if you buy the food that you want them to eat and then just let it go, like just really truly let it go. And that's something I probably struggled with that I didn't do so well, but I can tell everybody else to do it, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, give the advice and then take it. But um, those are some of the little ones that I can think of. Uh, I think I already mentioned, like make sure you show your kids the pictures of where you're going and then it's cool to show them on a map too. I think yeah. that's always fun. Uh, so yeah, I think those are the main things. That's great. I think this is such great information. I want to thank you again for coming on. And I want to remind everybody, guys, anyone that's that's an MSL out there, an aspiring MSL, and you want to um, connect with Sarah on LinkedIn, please do so. And 
um, reach out to her, send her maybe your CV. If, if you're on the market, she'd be happy to help you out. But um, I'm really, once again, really excited to, um, to really embark on this journey. And we're, Sarah and I are going to do some really awesome things. So I hope you guys can follow along um, and be a part of it. And like I said, connect with us, follow us, and uh, let us know how we can help you out. Definitely. Well, thanks for letting me come on. And I, like I said, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. And I felt like I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. So if I can help someone else that's like trying to go through that, you know, the transition and especially going back to the travel, like you can do it. It's we can all do hard things. So awesome. Thanks. Well, thanks, Sarah. And thank you guys for listening. You have a great day. And and don't forget to, uh, you know, check us out on uh, on YouTube. Take care, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe so that you don't miss episodes in the future and feel free to leave a rating or a review or a comment. Thanks again. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.